Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover or Mr. Goring Lover, but right now, South America looks great. Central America looks decent. Um, but here we are. The military of Altung, Foyerland, of course. A nice, thick nation, because we like... We love, we don't like them. We love them thick. Uh, Heaven Buff leads the uh, military of Altung, Brazilian. And, of course, Gros Colombian is over here. And we also took out uh, Colombia. Oh, the Americans are already here. My bad, I should have realized that earlier. Uh, a military of Avalton Karabik. <clears throat> yeah, by Carl Friedrich Merton. Uh, we're invading Jamaica, and uh, we have military of Avalton Latin America, led by Bastian. Good. So, now we're at war with Americans. What we doing? Hopefully, okay. No guarantees. Um, I might have been at war with them early, because I think I justified on Jamaica. And I forgot they were part of a puppet, or maybe it was Haiti. They're part of a pup, the uh, American puppet, so. Um, regardless, this is the episode we've all been waiting for, really. Um, for us to either get beat the crap out of, or beat the crap out of, the American. And uh, I've not been doing any focuses, have I? Hmm. So we've done most of the focuses with Operation Icarus here. <clears throat> now, uh, I read this one last time, so if you're into this, please go ahead. Boom. We're going to do that one. Operation Icarus, a beautiful focus. Absolutely beautiful. We've got some comments to go through and some comments that I should have addressed in the past couple episodes, but Strangle Their Eagle. As for campaign in the American mainland continues to capture resources and supplies, the Americans will do, no doubt, begin to turn to other sources to make up for the deficit. Luckily for many remaining allies they have in the OFN, and even from the Japanese Empire, possibly. We we'll never allow that to happen. Our subs and bombers will make short work of the convoys to trade capital of the world before forcibly returned to splendid isolation in short order. So we are, we were taking a small piece of Texas. Can we beat them up? It looks like we can so far. We've lost 50 against 11,000, which is fantastic. Um, but one of the comments from the past previous episodes was, what are your templates? Well, here's a military, a militia division, uh, you know, for resistance. Panzer Division 2 is a 40 combat width, 42 combat width, with uh, five things of APCs, 15 things of main battle tanks, engineers, attack helicopters, maintenance companies, air assault, and heli supply companies, because I really don't want them to use too much supply, because we're always out of oil. I'm not using any mountaineers, so we really don't need this division. We have infantry divisions, which are basically uh, four artillery, then one, two, eight, fourteen infantry uh, battalions, air assault companies, main battle tank recon companies for armor, for two armor. And we have support anti tank, artillery, engineers, and a lot of our army is made up of the Fallschirmjägers, which is just one, two, three, four, five, twenty battalions of elite infantry, which is just better than our normal infantry period. And basically the same thing as our elite infantry over there, so. Um, we have these divisions, which I don't really use. We have marine divisions, which I don't use. Yeah, so a lot of these guys we don't use. If you know me, <clears throat> I generally like to have uh, uh, one template for everything. Oh, I got rid of 80. Beautiful. Fantastic. Good boy. Um, where are our ships? You're literally all in the Caribbean. Good to know. Because we're going to need these ships here immediately right now. Hopefully, I ah, we're going to take out San Antonio. We'll get, get to Houston. We need that oil. College Station. Awesome. There goes Jamaica. Fantastic. Oh, God. I'm a little worried. I really don't want to send our guys in. Because they're going to get raided very hard. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where are you guys going? Oh, God. That, that's very scary. Oh god. Hey, we destroyed um, a couple of ships here and there on the, for the battle for Havana. Oh god. Okay, so far so good. Oh! Oh, there's our main fleet. Look at that. There's so many numbers, these guys are running over each other. We sunk a crap ton of enemy ships here. Love it. So, 28 destroyers, 10 corvettes, 10 frigates, and 3 lactors. I forgot about this. God dang it. Where are you guys at? Thank God we have our other division down there. Um, so... <clears throat> Hopefully it doesn't go too poorly for us. Oh, look at this. Look at all these convoys and why not we sunk. Hey, 10 more destroyers are gone. Good. What else? Oh, we lost quite a few planes. We sunk 12 destroyers, so that's worth it. Nice by promoted. Very nice. Uh-oh. We lost three destroyers. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm sure a lot of our ships need a repair and whatnot, don't they? Oh, God. Oh, 
Here we lost a sub. Not good. Convoy. Hey, look at this. We sunk an Australian Pride of the Fleet carrier. 42 destroyers, 6 frigates, or uh, and a couple corvettes. That is fantastic. And yeah, I'm just worried about the Navy. We've taken almost all of Texas already, and almost half of New Mexico, almost all of a good chunk of Arizona. Where is their army? 600 versus 54,000. They've only up to 73 divisions. We are way more prepared for this war than they were. Palm Springs? Never been there. Actually, it might have been. I don't think so, though. Ooh, we lost our destroyers. That's not good. Operation Icarus, World War III. What's considered <clears throat> an impossible nightmare. Uh, perhaps the final war in human history has begun as the war has finally broken out between the German Reich and the United States of America. After years of small invasions of lesser neighbors, the Reich and the United States have engaged in a final titanic struggle over the fate of the world upon Hermann Goring's order. Both America and Germany, in preparation for such a scenario, have built up massive nuclear stockpiles, well more than enough to end human civilization, as is currently known, as the first dogfights over the Atlantic occur. Millions of men report to their respective divisions and gigantic naval fleets set out on the greatest mission yet. The situation feared by billions becomes reality. Only one thing is earned. The end is near. The Americans shall be reminded of the taste of defeat. While Rockwell, he has sounded the fourth the trumpet that shall never recall retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. A dirge for freedom. Ooh. Early attack sub hole. Eh. I still say we made out better than them. Here's our main fleet. So they have only a few carriers. They have four. Well, we have, like, a few carriers and some battleships, too. Gunning them all down. So the more we can... Oh, we suck a carrier! Oh, yes! And right in their own... Basically, front yard. Not even their backyard. This is their front yard. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, I actually like the end of combat. That is fantastic. fan frippin flickin tastic Oh, that's not good. Oh, can't win them all. Um, what else? Strangle their eagle. In the good old USFA. The United States has always had an affinity with us, whether they admit, wish to admit it or not. Did the late Fuhrer not, not take inspiration from the many other systems of racial hierarchies and seek to create a state where those systems could be applied without the Jewish influence that had corrupted the Americans? If we're the final product, then America is at least a prototype. There are some who would even now listen to the call of a truly pure state and work to make their own land as glorious. Particularly in the deep southern eastern regions, there are many groups dedicated to fighting the influence of lesser peoples and races. We shall sound a trumpet blast, and they shall rise up to defend their homes, not from us, but from their true enemies, the Jews and Africans. White knights, rise up. Ah, good. More resource extraction. Something we could really use. And just more fuel, too. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, this is bad. So we lost a lot of planes, especially 14 advanced jet cast CVs. Well, we sunk, holy shnikes, 9 light cruisers, 72 destroyers, 12 corvettes, 3 frigates, 2 cruisers, and 2 subs. That's, that's worth it. That was worth it. We don't have enough attack helicopters. Honestly, the Navy's, I'm more scared of the American Navy than anything else. So, hey, what is the American Navy like right now? We've taken all of Texas. We're even in Oklahoma, almost Oklahoma City. They're out of that. 57 divisions. Air Force is probably strong, but they still have 27 carriers, and I don't know where they're at. They still have a crap ton of ships. Ooh, we lost two subs. That's not good. Hello. Go if you can. Um, there you go. Let's see what you can do, because air-wise, we're doing more than fine. <clears throat> It'll happen there. Fascism in America is inevitable and always has been. Whether it come through popular will or bullets was only the true question. It seems that the American people, or at least their Judeo-Bolshevik and raptured leaders, have chosen the latter, but there is still time to save many racially pure lives from utter destruction, the groups of sympathizers within the United States. That failed in its attempt to assassinate the president was never fully caught, and they are once again offering their services at this point. With the war having already begun, there is not much chance of a political change of heart on the American side still. According to these men, they were able to eliminate a large portion of the U.S. Congress. The government might feel the need to sue for peace. Are they any more promising than their last proposal, but why not? We stand to lose nothing. <sighs> Beautiful. Look at that. More screens. On the streets for a couple of pesky fighters and cast. Very good. 
very surprised we don't have any. Why do we not have anyone in these repairs? And that's why we invest in carriers very heavily. Carriers are very good right now, as far as I as far as I know. I could be completely wrong, but still, good. Those are taken care of. These guys are taken care of. When in doubt, we take care of our guys. You know. So guys, get over there. Awesome. Nice pilot promoted. Very good. And happy May, everybody. This war is going very very well. We have no fuel. I mean, what else is new? You know. Oh god, we're even seeing convoys over here. Of course, we did get Texas, so we should have a way more daily gain of fuel. Yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. Six Corvettes, 13 destroyers, four carriers? Oh, devastating. Um, skirmisher, that stuff. Where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? Alright, so you guys are just kind of all hanging out. So I need y'all to come here and form the Southeastern Front, or American Liberation. Yeah, we'll call it that. Ooh, we lost your subs, we sunk oh, a couple things here and there. Oh, White Knights of... Vice Ritter Sonda Commando. White Knights of Florida. Uh, yeah, that's about what I expected of them. 16 billion, almost 1% growth. This is going up a little higher. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much where I expected us to be at, you know. Oh, we said all these guys. White Knights of Florida. What we got Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia. As much as we appreciate you, welcome to the garrisons. Beat them up. West Palm Beach? Yeah, all of California is pretty much under us now. That is fantastic. Okay, look. A couple more screens, 15 more ships overall. Oh, oh yeah, we had Cyphers too. I forgot about that. I always, I completely forgot about Cyphers in this entire campaign. Oh, we don't even have it ready yet, so whatever. Oh! Not bad. Oh! So three carriers, eight cruisers, 61 destroyers, 11 corvettes. And we lost an attack sub and some other planes. And lost nine more carriers after that. Jesus Christ. And we're just shredding their navy like crazy. I mean, the best strategy is still just a death stack, it seems like. Hattiesburg. Nice. Beautiful. What happened there? A stupid operation. We can't possibly expect the American nutcases to have achieved an operation as simple as frying an egg, so it's no surprise that the complex and immense difficulty task, or difficult task, I would give them blowing up the U.S. Capitol and killing the President was a hilarious failure. The Bund agents, alongside Gordon and Moore's odd Christian identity paramilitary group, attempted to storm the Capitol of the outbreak of dawn, and the majority of them were gunned down during the attack. A few of them did manage to get inside and shoot some random congressmen, guards, and bureaucrats, but the President was safely evacuated from D.C. the moment the attack began. There's no easy way to end this war like we'd hoped, but at least we managed to wreak some havoc upon the American government. It's something that eventually their best damned, best last hoped dimmed. It is finished after the most intense battle the world shall ever see. The guns have fallen silent as the world awakes to the realization that the new order that was promised has been truly established. There's no more democracy. There's no more United States of America. Their military has been crushed. Their leaders executed. Their lands divided into military vivaltungs. With the unification of far away dream. The nation was once that once positioned itself as our greatest rival has been utterly defeated. With this victory, there's no force on earth that can stand up to us any longer. Seek how, seek how, seek how. Love it. Where are you guys at? Here. Oh, linked up land of iron. Vice. Vice? Fire and ice. As Finn and Ashuna stepped under the blood-soaked eyes, he could not hide the frown that was forming. He knew that most of Goring's men were fighting some hellhole, along with all the logistical pains that were wrought. Ashuna knew that this had been a risky move, taking some of the few Kriegs marine ships loyal to him, and taking Iceland in a fell swoop. What Ashuna had not expected was an island almost certainly devoid of soldiers. He heard stories of the prowess of the small but elite troop that had been stationed there here for over 20 years. In all honesty, all there had been was a brief but bloody skirmish at the beachhead, costing him more than 60 men. 
He now stood inside the small camp erected for the degenerate Americans. All twelve of them liquidated without mercy. There had also been a single scout. That was now in a dark room of the nearest boat. The degenerate Americans learned how to cooperate. Hashona, Hashona, came a voice from behind him. It was a thin man, much less nervous than Shona would have preferred. Yes, of us, Frederick. The Americans said to cooperate and explain the island's vacancy. Explain. Appears that the Americans, in their decadent stupor, were rather taken aback by the actual invasion of their home front. Thus, they had to their president calling for an immediate withdrawal of all foreign based troops. Shona was angry. Not only had he as of yet been unable to outmaneuver that bastard of a Fuhrer, but he also couldn't have a little fun. That ass had taken the one thing he'd enjoyed from him, yet again, Shona had been sidelined by a fat man. Commend Shona for his victory. His stunning victory, we should say. Columbus, ah, Georgia, yes. Oh, you go there. Greenville. Charlotte, where I was born. Charleston, Myrtle Beach. Fantastic place to be. Norfolk. All up to DC. Good. How many more ships do they have? 338. We've shredded through 200 of them. Last couple tax subs, which uh, makes sense. Couple subs. Ooh, look at that, nice. Couple more subs. Fantastic. I guess we're going for Canada. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, DC's ours. Look at that. Slowly shredding through them. I love it. Camden. Happy June, everybody. Gettysburg. Fantastic place. Beautiful place, too. Oh, look at that. Even more... Even more. An AD's nuclear reactor, very cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, someone says, is it possible to invade the United States and TNO either Japan or Germany? Um Yeah. Yeah. Look at that, the conquest of America. It is over. The Statue of Liberty lays toppled, destroyed in a devastating blast. Mass graves lay everywhere. Dozens of widows trying to find their sons and husbands in the piles. Abraham Lincoln's statue lies desecrated. Its head cut off and broken with a makeshift Hitler held in its place. Southern towns lay complete in fear, as they can see their own countrymen join the Nazi soldiers shoulder to shoulder wearing the Klan costumes. The White House is a smoldering house completely looted and destroyed beyond repair. American spirit is completely and utterly crushed. The once proud American flag, once saluted to every morning, now lie in pieces on the ground, being burnt by the dozen of occupying German soldiers. The last best hope of the free world lays dead. Its rotting and burnt bald eagle carcass laying firmly under the claw of the ferocious and bloody German eagle. Already German generals and politicians excitedly divvy up the now conquered American and remaining allies' lands, jumping with joy at the chance of gaining their own fiefdom. Goring even at its growing age, so felt great joy over such an amazing accomplishment. The United States, Germany remains rival for a decade, but utterly demolished and disintegrated. Damage so severe that even a second American Revolution wouldn't make much of a dent. Yet when growing things of it more, it sought Starkin. Was this just how the Entente Americans fought after the Great War, simply just divvying up the spoils of the German Germany and its allies' empires? Millions, tens of millions of people died for the God's sakes, and yet here he was, feeling happier than the same mindset. He pondered more of the rules were reverse. What if the Americans had won World War II instead? Would Germany have been occupied, torn apart? He shuddered at the thought, but also imagined his precious homeland being torn in two. His people were disunited. The thought made him sa soured. Mood turned to rage. Oh, he'll do much more than that just disunite the cursed Yanks. He'll make sure the work American is a thing of the past. It happened there. Fantastic. As we divvy up all the lands between us, and now we get ready for the super mega end, in which we have to go to war with the Empire of Japan. Uh, but we'll see when we get there. And here we have it, everybody. America broken up. We have Military of Autumn Pacific by Reimer, Boralin by Hans Rudolf Rosing, uh, the West is led by Luto, uh, Felsengeberge, we have the other Midwest states, uh, Grosen Ebenen, Ebenen, yeah, Military Verwaltung of Sudamerica, uh, Goring owns Florida himself, 
We have uh, Mulder's leading Grossa scene, Military of Vaulting Atlantic with the President Hart, uh, the National Focus of Bashona, Military of Vaulting Quebec, and uh, Laura Laurentine, and as well as Military of Vaulting Ozinin. So, we've done very well. But we've got one more. Also, there's a decision here earlier to take, and now Military of Vaulting Occitanin owns all of like northern France, or I guess northwestern France. And the coast up here, I couldn't tell you why, but that was an option for Fall Blau, and I just clicked it because I wanted to. Um, so there we go. And we've also, I think we finished up our focus down here too. Yes, the last best hope dimmed. But time for Fall Dambaro. This is it. Oliver Sack, five years of war have led us to this moment. We're finally in position commenced with Fall Dambaro. A Dambaro. A resistance fighter, so as they continue to fight an unending war from the shadows as giant corporations dominate the sphere, only interested in lining their own pockets. The, sphere, the Empire of the Rising Sun has fallen far since the great last victories, <clears throat> um, which gives us the opportunity to strike deep into the economic heartland, continental Asia. Our greatest challenge is establishing a land border of the Japan sphere. We have two equally ambitious routes. The first proposed plan is to kick down the rotten door to the east one last time and finally conquer the Rus, which we did. The terrain in Siberia is inhospitable, and we would need to build a supporting infrastructure, but this is the most direct route to Japan's holdings. Alternatively, we could surprise the world to make our approach south through Iran and India. Though the going will be tough, to say the least, it would be completely unpredictable. Our aggression would gladly catch the Japanese off uh, balance, which could be decisive in the coming war, in either scenario. We will also focus on making contact with unwilling participants in Japan's sphere. By offering the nations chain to Japan freedom, we could gain much needed friends and footholds in the east. With some German army at their throats, uh, and the rebels stabbing their back, Japan cannot hope to hold out against the might of the Reich, which definitely will happen since, uh, well, we just got America. And what up did the Japanese do? We just destroyed and shredded the American Navy. So, the southern route, after much deliberation, our high command has finally made its decision. The might of the German Wehrmacht will strike south. I don't know where we decided to go, though. Um, the time to prepare for perhaps our greatest fight yet is now at hand. The army must be mobilized and moved east towards our border with Iran, slowly so as to alarm anyone. When the time finally comes, our army, we in one full swoop, shall strike out and sweep aside all who oppose us. We'll only have one shot at this. Once the attack begins, we'll commit everything towards overrunning the south and establishing our border with Japan as soon as possible uh, in the local area. This will completely catch the Japanese by surprise. Um, and completely catch the world by surprise. No one will expect to make such a daring attack, which is part of the appeal of the route. Nothing can stop us, of course. Not even the Americans. The might of the Reich is unparalleled. And seek is assured. Seek Heil. Legal shot down. Herman Goring entered his office. Ceremoniously dressed, looking for something that would resemble this event, he ordered to be organized. So he could show the German nation, as well as the whole world, that no one stronger than Germany exists. And that anyone who dares to stand in her way will never succeed in overcoming her, because no one will ever be able to from this moment. From New York to Washington, from Florida to Kentucky, from the Midwest to Washington State and the Pacific Coast. The troops remained mowed down by the strength of the German steel and their will. Goring knew that no one would ever be able to burst out again and to say, We will stop you and we will not stop until we die. And if he says, He will die trying to stop the unstoppable. The sun was shining brighter than ever while Goring was looking forward to this day, which had been waiting for so, so for so stressfully and for so long that he now was looking out of the window, imagining himself as the master of the whole world. But it was time. It had to be shown to the people that what had been achieved during this time in the direction of Fall Rockwall. Appearing before the people, he waved to them while the people worshipped him as a kind of god which he was, because he defeated the last enemy of the growing Germany. Dear people, my dear Germans, I have gathered you here today to point out to you the power of your fatherland, which we have been building for so long, which we have soaked and glued with blood, just so that it does not collapse before its glory, in which we are to you again, I say, succeeded succeeded overall. The perfect perfidence will never be stronger than will, just as pretentiousness will never beat or steal. The United States has succumbed, unable to withstand any more of our heroic troops that have ravaged anything that could have served as a counterattack opportunity. Over the dead eagle of the so-called freedom that they present as a lie served to the people, because we are telling them now, salvation has come to you today with the arrival of Germany, a dawn of a new age. Fantastic. The beginning of the end. The rally was perhaps Nuremberg's largest one yet. Not since the founding days of the party back in the 30s had such a crowd gathered in anticipation and celebration. It was hard to compare the sheer amount of people to those days, though. Attendance was off the charts to the Raymer's pleasure. He stood in front of the podium. Uh, relishing the cheers from over a hundred thousand of his fellow countrymen that stood in front of him, overfilling the plaza. My fellow Germans, my fellow brothers, and countrymen. Raymer began, the crowd roared back in assent, their approval shaking the ground itself. Raymer stood, a large grin on his face. This, he thought, must be how Hitler felt. He scanned the mass of the crowd, looked upon the mass of swastika banners hanging from the buildings, then at the old man sitting to his right, with the Reich's highest ranking officer sitting around him. Goring for his part did look regal. His uniform neatly pressed as always, with his badges glinting in the afternoon sun. His expressiveness, however, was stoic. No emotions were expressed on his stony face. 
Raymer knew he didn't want to be there, but what else could he do? What kind of fear would miss the occasion? The crowd's noise began to die down. Today is a momentous day, Raymer continued, for the Reich is about to claim what is rightfully ours. Finally, after so much time, we will finally lay low the rest of the traitors that opposed us in the old world. The crowd again roared their approval. Raymer nodded his head in agreement for too long. Much too long, the Japanese cowards exploited the people of Asia. For decades, they worked the blood of nationals while spitting us. Us. Even though without us there would be no Japanese empire, the cowards have sat in the corner of the world for far long enough. It is time to bring low the last of our so-called friends, those that thought they could get away with using the Reich and her people as means to an end. The crowd went mad, and the din of so many in such a small area was deafening. Raymer stepped down, motioning for Gorney to take the stage for a moment. Tensions on the stage were worryingly high as the Fuhrer glared at Raymer, but he stood up and walked to the microphone. In a booming voice, the time for talking is over. Now is the time for action. See Kyle. See Kyle. See Kyle. Operation Alexander. Operation Alexander will be a continuous blitz throughout the entire Middle East and into the Indian subcontinent. Once we start the operation, there will be no stopping to ensure the Japanese stay out of our business. Preparation is key. See about the sphere. Japan's hold on the sphere is shakier than we first thought. This content over corporate or Zagbatsu exploitation is nearly incomprehensible. They are so hated. Forced payments to Japan directly, strict military and government oversight, and limitations on few prospects of economic advancement has made Japan's hold on the conquest from the Second World War fragile, to say the least. If we extend our hands and offer the downturn and plugs of these Asian backwaters the opportunity, many of them would uh, <clears throat> jump at the chance to stab Japan in the back. All we need to do is offer some incentives, of course. Just a few incentives. Hello, what do we got here? Plenty of political power. Slave made guns. Oh, we'll crack the sphere. Fall Dambarum. Continues at a pace and are planning to destroy the Japanese Empire and the sphere, both in whole and in parts, shall commence. We shall work to subvert Japan's influence over its puppets and replace their loyalty to the Empire with loyalty to the Fuhrer. Japanese are unaware of our intentions. Oh, fuck, occupied, friendly to Japan. Invade Iraq. Oh, yes. The Levant. Oh, yeah. Arabine. Oh, yeah, definitely. Iraq. I definitely want to Iraq. But you guys aren't here yet. None of you guys are here yet. <coughs> the Northern Route. Why would we invade hundreds upon hundreds of kilometers of brutal mountain ranges to get at Japan's throat when we already have a perfectly usable route in the north? There is no need of a complicated invasion by trying to make a pipe dream re become reality. The Northern Route, though underdeveloped and currently lacking infrastructure, is a much more simple and direct route to the heart of the Japanese Empire. Well, little works have been concerned to be tooled to support the massive armies needed for glory greatest war yet. The Manchurian Plains are a textbook definition of perfect terrain for Blitzkrieg. Once initial mountain ranges are breached, with wide open plains run straight to Beijing. By this air superiority, no Japanese unit could hope to withstand against the steel might of the Wehrmacht in the field. All of our work, blood, sweat, and tears, and fallen comrades all sacrificed to get us to this point in this moment. And see looms near one more war in the Reich shall achieve our destiny. Our dominance over all those who would dare stand against us seek how the fear leads us to victory. Allies in the farthest places for two decades. Uh, Indonesia has been exploited ruthlessly by the Japanese Empire. The Japanese use a heavy hand to keep partisan activity to acceptable levels, and as a result, the IJS has a substantial permanent garrison station in the region. Tensions run high, and if presented with an opportunity, even the Japanese sponsored pop up government may be swayed to turn against the Empire given the opportunity. Sending our agents to clue in on the Indonesians would be a high priority if they were to join us. A substantial portion of the sphere's manpower could be tied, end up tied down fighting a massive insurrection. Influence Sphere Nation? Oh, sure. Cool. I do invade Iraq though. And here comes the lag. Which looks like it's going through this stuff or cycle very quickly compared to what has been previously. It says invite Iran. Well, we'll see. Japanese folly. Well, we'll see about that. I'll take a little bit of time. The dragon rises. No one suffered more from the Japanese than the Chinese. For over two brutal decades, the Chinese had to do Japanese occupation, taxation, government oversight, and a total economic domination, yet the Chinese still remained unbroken. 
Passive resistance in the reconstruction government is still high, surprisingly high, even after a near total overset from the samurai for so long. The Chinese have been abiding their time and boast of impressive industrial capabilities, as well as a modest army. While immediately allying them may seem like the best idea, their ideas of a greater China, like the days of the, uh, their empires, has not been forgotten. We shall have to decide between either the cliques around them or the central Chinese government for a war against the Japanese. I'm running through the jungle. Burma is a gate to China at large. It's here that our initial push will be made, and here we'll, we'll punch, potentially have the most issue punching through. The vast peaks of tense jungle is paired with an inhospitable climate makes for hellish battlefield conditions, and any fighting could potentially grind any advance we have to a halt. We're fortunate then that we perhaps need ooh, to not fight the Burmese. Ooh, my bad. It's happy August, everybody. <clears throat> um, new reports also live another displeased subject of the Japanese Empire, forced to paint in Japan's economic sphere for little to no gain. Perhaps with the right words, we can pass unimpeded through Burma's treacherous jungles. Education, Operation Alexander. Uh, it's a name attributed to our southern push, to the borders of the sphere. Like the great conquer before us, our armies will storm south into Iran and crush any resistance in her path. Whether or not Iran joins the pact is of no consequence. We'll march through the country one way or another. The us to Afghanistan, our next stop. With plenty of saturation bombing, we should be able to sweep away any resistance that would dare stand before us and blitz through the country in no time. That takes us to the gates of India, with the largest challenge presented to us. Here our panzers and mobile infantry will shine as we break out, the, out of the mountains and sh into the subcontinent itself. After we take several strategically important cities, the government will have no choice but to surrender. This operation must succeed. We cannot proceed with our plans to destroy the sphere. If we cannot get a direct border of the Japanese puppet states, Operation Alexander will be continued splits, of course, through this. Our subversion. Our contacts in the Indonesian government might prove useful after all, if not a way originally intended. By accidentally leaking our communication with Indonesian and no double agents, we can sow distrust between Japan and its fierce lackeys. We might even trigger a small purge. Either the way, our opponents won't be as united. Of course, doing this would cause the Japanese to crack down on the puppets and thus ending our wooing of Shonan as well. It's about the seed of distrust. Yeah. Cool. Can you not go in? Uh, there we go. That should have right. Syrian national state. Huh. I'll definitely take them out too then. Weird. Very odd, but okay. Clamp down in Arabia. We get to the subcontinent. Um, well, we have no time to waste. Saudi Arabia has made its bed before, well before now. They once made their beds with Italians. How can we ever trust them after that? I have ever thought of a place in the pact as equals. They are apt to stab us in the back and inform the Japanese of our plans. This will not do. We have no choice but to invade the peninsula. The operation itself will be quick and decisive. The Arabs simply do not have the military might to stand against the vast might of the Reich. We will blitz across the peninsula and crush all those who oppose us. The oil wells will make a great addition to the Reich's conquest, of course. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll get to get the Syrian national state. I don't know why it exists there still, but still. Whatever. Into the Indian Ocean. With Saudi Arabia now under control of German influence, we now have access to docket facilities with direct access to the Indian Ocean. That's a huge strategic advantage for forces. The Kriegs me now has four operating bases to raid the Italian Ocean with impunity. These trade links are vital to both India and Japan. Being about an indirect, about two indirect enemy troops and their spy lines in these waters will make fighting our foes in the coming waters a much less grueling affair. An ambitious commander could also stage amphibious landings from, from here if the situation allows it. 
Awesome. And here we go again. Oh, that was over, but apparently not. You know, all these different flags we've got. Beautiful. Go ahead and go in. Um, what's after that? Take into the Indian Ocean. Separate the chains of command. Mortician speed. Oh god, a mortician. Operation Alexander can not be bogged down with an effective chain of command. Our general staff is full of ambitious and skilled men. This leads to disagreements, to put it mildly. Our best men at all have different skill sets and approaches to combat. At this time, we cannot allow any bickering within the upper echelon to impede our upcoming invasion. Therefore, we are going to split this chain of command so we have chopped generals a total local autonomy from each other. While some see this as potentially catastrophic, so we have victory is key to our success. The head will not be able to afford any lost time once the invasion starts. If anything, this will spark competitiveness between our staff, which will drive them even harder on our journey east. Giving your generals free reign will let them act to the fullest of their potential, which should see their blitz uh, east uh, proceed with minimal hiccups. The Japanese are preparing for conflict, huh? Flip the switch. Hmm. Sure, so Japanese does suspect a thing will work in secret with the Iranian military? The invasion will both receive a buff. Gate the subcontinent. Greatest betrayal. I want to do that. I just like taking them out. Flip the switch. Just down the hair awaits orders to move in Iran. This is it. Once we launch Operation Alexander, there'll be no mercy, more diplomacy with the various squabbling fools in the region. We'll secure the entirety of Iran. They quickly press further eastwards. Once we launch an invasion, we'll march until we reach Bengal or die. This is it. There's no going back. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for Aryan children. Yeah, pretty much. Because we were trying to build more military and air bases around here too, anyways. So that was the idea, at least. Separate the chain of command. Good. Um, not quite there yet. Let's go run through the jungle first. Just got to finish this guy. These guys down here too. In the Lion City. Once ever British stronghold of Singapore, Sionan, is perhaps Japan's most viable city outside of their heartlands. Sitting in a key strategic junction, Sionan is a premier naval base for the IJN in Southeast Asia. Securing the loyalty of the local native authorities could be a massive boon for invasion. A bottleneck in Malaya could but delay Japanese reinforcements to their front lines by weeks. Deriving or depriving the empire of this vital region could be decisive in the coming war. Against all masters. The Albert has been working around the clock these last few weeks. It's taken some time on the ground training, but her agents have quickly become adept at infiltrating the spheres of various puppets and member states. Oh my god, stop lagging. Please, come on. Jesus Christ. Um, working around the camp by attack can be lethal work, but her agents in the field have adapted quickly. By establishing intelligence networks all throughout Asia and identifying resistance groups that would welcome our help, our agents have become much more effective at winning over rebellious nations in the sphere. The experience will serve us as well as we continue to win over more nations for cause against Japan. Divide and rule? Our current efforts manage to get a decree of influence in the Burmese government. However, a better option for interest in the area might have presented itself. The city is full of rebels and separatist movements. The choice is obvious. Support the rebels and give up to the central government. Or save them, of course. Splinter, Burma into a thousand pieces. Preserve influence in the central government. Oh, we'll do that one right now. Dragon rises. China, and it will grow even larger. Support China's attempts to annex Tibet during and after the war with Japan. Only way to get China on your side is sacrificing alliances with other cliques. Freedom for all, all the peoples of East Asia. The lands of the many smaller Chinese cliques are more than breathtaking. They're deadly partisan, near, full near jungle to our forces. These cliques, like many member states of the sphere, are forced to pay into the economic system that is of no benefit to them, however. Our agents in the Abbear have discovered that the Chinese are more than willing to join our cause with some help in the fight to liberate Asia from the leeches in Tokyo. There's a downside, however. Our friends in China greedily set their eyes on these cliques. Us guaranteeing their independence allows them to serve. To all join the pact is to, will severely anger our potential ally. Relations between us and China will severely sour be a precede, but if it's well worth the displeasure for you few allies. Strengthen the Chinese unity against my dog. Qinghai will support us in a war. Tensions in Malaya. Ethnic tensions between Malays and Chinese minority have been the thing for centuries now, ruled by Xi'an. While we are still trying to get the entirety state into the pact, 
This is by no means uh, <clears throat> a guarantee. Hence, we can instead take, use the influence of networks built up by the Reich's agents in a different way. And insert agents provoca provocateurs and rile up racial tensions to a boiling point. That should provide a useful distraction, and if Shonan refuses to join us, it shall prove a crippling tool against them. Why not? Honestly, you know what? Screw it. Screw the other nations. I want China with us. Big China. China will grow larger. Our newfound friends of China are ambitious a lot, even now they are plotting into the near future. A future for now for, uh, from underneath the Japanese boot. Normally we don't care what their plans are after a great war, but the Chinese have come up with one condition. If we should continue our uh, Amancio relations with, the war, with after a war with Japan, we would have to guarantee uh, the Japanese government will have a free hand in all current autonomous cliques. This will, however, make all but certain that the independent cliques will be our foe in the coming war. Hello, Japan. How are you? You will die. Like the dogs you are. Like I said, you are going to die. Hello. Good, good, good. Upgrading subversion. The continuous efforts of the Reich security organizations against the despicable co prosperity sphere has gone on for quite some time, but now they've accumulated a considerable body of experiences. Hence, we can now improve our means to gain influence even further. We can either become more brutal, underhanded, or reckless in getting influence quickly, um, but instead of stabilizing our targets in the process, or we can increase our influence gain by taking more long term measures, which would, of course, take longer to implement. Finally, we can focus on the true issue at hand finding allies against Japan and supporting them into capable fighters that will draw the fire against Tokyo. Let's be effective. Who cares about stability? Political power costs will drop to 25 and cool down go down to 7 days at the cost of costing the targeted nations 5% war support and stability and 33% chance of increasing with Japanese awareness. Long term view. Influence more of the cost of the cool down being increased by 7 days or focus does and is Japan. Oh, let's do that one. From within. Every nation which joins Ionite's back will receive the following national spirit anti Japanese fervor. Interesting. We still want to do it through the steps. The infrastructure in Central Asia will be of the utmost importance for upcoming war with Japan and its sphere. One of our main supply routes will run through the entirety of the Rakhine Commissar at Turkestan to this end. Our existing infrastructure will need major upgrades, and this will become a major uh, supply hub for the impending invasion. Their existing dirt roads will be the bones upon which we shall build new autobahns on. Rail lines shall be. Well, there aren't any? Well, no matter. We'll build those too. Fantastic. Yeah, that's looking better already. Good, good, good. <clears throat> Make sure we're all ready through here. I'm going to flip the switch soon. Trying to grow larger. Um, through the steps under the mountains, allowing this independent clique inside our faction will grant us good will towards other areas, to other ones. <coughs> Witness partner. Tension of the Japanese increases. Secure Xinjiang. Oh, I like that one the most. Xinjiang's strategic value is too important to leave into the hands of a bunch of rogue desert and mountain men. We simply cannot leave them to their own devices either. The J Japanese are able to get their hands on the region. It could spell disaster for supply lines, and yet we cannot trust them either. <coughs> Our only options invade the region. The tackle should be swift and brutal. Securing this region will give us more options for our eventual invasion of Japan and a secure uh, vital connection to China and secure the Russias. Our holdings, are, our holdings in Russia are in a sorry state, to put it mildly, across Siberia. Factories lay silent, their ruins a testament to both Germany's strength of arms and the Russian stubbornness. Mines are empty, or lay empty, and their equipment is stripped and stolen while thousands of displaced people wander the vast plains. The rail lines that once crossed the great plains are totally destroyed, and even the dirt roads are in just total disrepair. The situation is abysmal. 
Normally none of this would be an issue and we would let the local administrations deal with the reconstruction. With the impending war with Japan on the horizon, however, we cannot afford to sit and wait perhaps years for basic dirt roads to be redug. A concentrated effort towards rebuilding the bottle industry and infrastructure should be implemented and the locals should be put back to work. Yeah. Why not? The military and the minister, Nanjing 1am. Otto Raymer slowly looked around himself as he approached the unassuming harbor warehouse. No one was following, no camp out today, nothing suspicious, nevertheless. No, no, you go in first, make sure it's not a trap. One of his bodyguards nodded and went in. After a few tense moments, he returned. Everything seemed in order, he had general. They are here, including Zhang Wu himself. Raymer checked his suit in one of the window reflections one last time, then motioned his entourage to follow him. What looked like just any other warehouse had been quickly remodeled. Fancy chairs and a heavy conference table had replaced cargo holds. Drinks and glasses were accurately distributed. The cements of carpets and handmade lamps rounded off the picture. The Chinese would certainly try to make the place presentable. And there in the middle stood the man he was looking here for, Gao Zongwu, President of the Chinese Republic. A firm handshake later, and the rain could finally act, uh, could finally start what he'd been here for. Get the Chinese to fight the Japan so German blood would have to be spilled. He didn't put it that way, of course, but the other side wasn't stupid. They knew Goring, Shorn, and his company wanted pawns, not allies. Still, the meeting went somewhat pragmatic, but everyone knew it and could almost feel each other's revulsion. But that didn't matter, for now all that was important was dealing with Japan. That was the only thing that mattered. War time makes for strange bedfellows, of course. As we'll secure the rushes, and then from within, and we'll do this one. Exhaust the supply lines. The astronomical amount of materials are many is astronomical. These mountain roads are horrendous. Conditions are far worse than we expected, even in our worst case scenario. We barely have enough supplies to keep our men moving forwards, let alone fight. Meanwhile, the clock's still ticking. We cannot wait to build up new infrastructure. We need to focus on pushing east. <clears throat> to this end, we're going to push our logistic chain to its limit. We'll run food, ammo, and fuel, and anything and everything until we have nothing left to sand. Speed is of the essence, and pushing our supply lines to the limit will give our men at the front lines much some much needed material. Overclocking our lines is not feasible forever, though. We need to hurry up and finish those wars before our logistic lines start to crack. Division recovery rate plus a thousand percent. Once the idea expires, we'll gain the following national spirit as a replacement. Oh god. Emergency repatriations. Oh god. Fighting is taking toll on the already lackluster infrastructure in Central Asia and India. As a result, reinforcements have have been having issues making it up to the front lines. Supplies aren't re reaching our men, and our progress is beginning to slow as a result. The few rail lines that exist are in disuse and disrepair, and many bridges need urgent repairs. This is unacceptable. We'll round up any engineers we can find and deploy them throughout the regions that we already have secured with one task, and one task only. Fix the damn roads. And we're just probably going to just come in and smash them all to bits. That's a hope, at least. Kajingjiang, are you... You're independent, okay. Good to know. So I'll flip the switch and then immediately go through the partisan suppression. Oh, weekly civilian plus 5% all Russian military league. We must be very careful in dealing with these Russians. They may prove to be difficult to control, if at all. Time for service. I like partisan suppression. For many a partisan, the war in the East has never been truly ended. Hundreds of these scum hide in the vast countryside while insurgent cells were multiplied in various towns and cities scattered across the plains. We're going to have resistance in our own lines when we're at war, so this rot needs to be burnt out now at once. We'll intensify efforts to hunt down any Russian who would dare resist the will of the Reich. Yeah, pretty much, man. So these guys have any uh, issues here? No? Okay. They have no divisions. Okay. I'm okay with that. Not quite ready to invade Afghanistan, but soon. Weekly plus five percent weekly stability is fantastic. Our old breed. Look, locked into thousands of dark cells in Germany. Ideal. Some of the the Reich's most efficient brutal killers after the Civil War. Thousands of SS men who did not fight to the death and weren't shot on sight currently waste away in cells. Lives for for the state is more or less forgotten. These fanatics content to let them rot away in prison. The coming war will require every man we can get to hold of. Though they will have sold their nation before, we could offer them a path to redemption. We could form penal battalions made up of these men for the upcoming war with Japan. These hardened butchers could be the spirit of our invasion, used for the most dangerous assaults, or let loose to us, pacify local populations, as is their specialty. It would be foolish of us not to let, use the tools left at their disposal. Three special infantry divisions will spawn in the military of a vaulting for Nost, composed of former SS soldiers. Cool. Oh, wow, 33 destroyers. All in exchange for one jet cast. Not bad. Alright, Afghan.
Afghanistan. And the Khanate of Kalat. Interesting. And the frontier provinces, huh? And then we'll invade. Five days left, and then through the steps. Yeah. Happy December, everybody. Happy, happy December. Just a lot of stability, and I love it. Spot and subject factor increased by 20%. Some free infrastructure, sign us up. And from within, channel grow larger. I like that one. The gate to the subcontinent. At a glance, Afghanistan is an easy country to roll through. Desert tribesmen, the pitiful few professional divisions, a few are no match for German valor and army. Invading Afghanistan however, could take weeks, even with the constant air support. Occupying such a country would prove to be yet another headache that perhaps don't need to deal with if we take a different approach. Instead of invading Afghanistan, rebuilding its infrastructure, then garrisoning it, we could offer them a place to the pact. They may be hesitant to join, but we promise the Muslim majority of providences of India in return for their loyalty, we would be offering them a deal too good to refuse. A friendly Afghanistan would be securing our roads and supply lines into India itself, while saving us the efforts of having to occupy a worthless mound of sand and rock. Nah. We are, we aim to own. Beautiful. Fill the lines. <clears throat> Any Russian who's deemed not a threat to the state should have the offer to join a cause against a samurai. The benefits are much better than working in some squalid factory, and the conditional manpower could very well end up being the dealing factor, deciding factor, in us winning the war. It's not an ideal situation, having a large amount of non-Germans fighting alongside our men, but uh, our situation is one born out of necessity. We'll need every man we can get who can hold a rifle. The Manchurian dep depots. Our logistics officers have identified several key junctions to set up supply depots that are once invasion once an invasion is underway. The purpose is for our army to remain uh, autonomous and on the move even in the event of our lines being cut off, however unlikely that may be. Thousands upon thousands of tons of food, water, and ammo. Fuel, anything and everything related to the upcoming campaigns being stockpiled for this purpose. The fear is uh, adamant that we leave nothing to chance or men will fight with everything they could possibly ever need. Beautiful. Our ships are there too. India. Yes. Oh, poor sweet India. You will be ours. Poor in three. Xinjiang will be fine. We'll get him eventually. Good. Happy, uh, January, everybody, 1979. Is there a peace conference, maybe? Oh, yeah, I think there is. Fantastica. There is no America they can go to. America is dead. Military of Walton Atlantic. Oh, that's the old America. Wait, why are we so low on this? I'd say we we've won a total victory. I mean, America's dead. Just saying. mountains. The first phase of all Operation Damarung is over. Operation Alexander has been a total success. Now that we have a land border of the Japanese fear, we can take a breath and prepare for our next move. Our armies should prepare for the inevitable conflict with Japan. Uh, troops will need to familiarize themselves with fighting the jungles of Southeast Asia. Our diplomats and agents, meanwhile, can use this time to test the waters of the sphere, so to speak, and see who really is loyal to leeches in Tokyo, who is willing to rise up against their occupiers. And as luck would have it, Japan has precious few allies left in the sphere. Yay! 
from within is next, maybe. Nice. Restore Mongolian pride. For two decades, Mongolia has been one large battleground for the fierce fighting. Russian communists and Japanese troops continuously skirmished with each other throughout the landscape, while Mongolians are caught in the crossfire. The one Mongolian revolt crushed by fierce and indecisive Japanese firepower. It's not to say Mongolia is pacified. Thousands of nationalists hide underground, biding their time while they hoard any weapons they can find. Ever since, some of our own men helped train and arm these freedom fighters. They can prove to be a useful decoy while our armies crash upon the Japanese from Manchuria. Military of Avalton, China. Look at that. Look at this guy, Otto von Bolo. Okay, cool. Because mm, these groups are all... Oh, maybe they're not all part of it. Interesting. Uh, there you go. We're definitely going to need some... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, this is so bad. Oh, this is so bad. Supply, exceptional supply depot in Dalian, huh? Vladivostok, Arbin. Oh, invade India. Are we ready to go? Uh, almost. Block off Mongolia. Well, our front with Japan is fierce mass, and we could change the face of the map, however, with some careful planning and timing. As steps of Mongolia are no interest to the right, however, the Japanese are proud of a fall and any insecration would attract the attention of the IJA. While the Japanese spread themselves thin, trying to hold all of their possessions, we can focus on overrunning Manchuria, which would be a huge economic blow to the Japanese. Um, oh God, um, once it falls. While well, the Japanese are worrying about maintaining the status quo in Mongolia, they will already be halfway to Beijing. As Frederick the Great once said, he who defends everything defends nothing. Operation Al Alexander warns the sphere. Unfortunately, March through the Middle East hasn't been quite as quick as we have first hoped for. While progress is still being made, our delayed advance has given the Japanese and sphere lackeys time to prepare for the inevitable. It won't change the end result, of course, for the might of the Reich is unstoppable, but the resistance uh, we can't expect once we reach the sphere will be much bigger. Dealing with Japan won't be easier. Escape the rising sun, but we're going to invade India first. In 10 days. All of our work these last few months has led us here. For months, we've infiltrated the nations that Japan has abused, sucked dry, or ignored. For months, our men have trained, supplies have been socked, but on intricate webs of espionage weaved. The battle plans have been drawn, and alliances have been negotiated, and now it's time. It's time for the rising sun to set. It's time for the right to achieve its destiny, and once and for all. Like an unstoppable wave which will crash upon the entirety of the Japan so called co prosperity sphere, and they shall soon learn their fatal mistake, under underestimating us. Got Metun's Sieg Heil, and then a scale up to the rising sun. The time for waiting is over, now is the time for fighting men and warriors. The world will watch close closely, for the balance of the world is about to dra dramatically and drastically shift permanently. The sun's about to set on the Empire of the Rising Sun, and in its place will rise the Iron Eagle of the Reich. Happy February. Our panthers are itching to blitz across the Manchurian plains, and who are we to stop them? As well, tell the Reich puts the Japanese in their place once and for all. To our German comrades, uh, see Kyle, you fight for your homes, your family, and your Reich. Your people demand nothing short of NC. So, we got a lot of people when we go to war with them. Yeah, like I said, happy February. We gotta wait a couple days to do this. Take out India, we'll call an episode, and the last episode will probably be the next one. I want you to take out the Japanese Empire, which shouldn't be as bad, because I was really worried about the American Navy, but... And we have only so many divisions. I mean, I'd rather have quality over quantity almost any day. Not almost, not every day, but almost any day of the week. Wouldn't doubt just death stack your carriers and capital ships and screens, you know? Oh, across the wastes, huh? 
Our final preparations are underway. Men are mobilizing across the frontiers, ready for battles. Their jets are loaded with munitions for the inevitable battles to come. Who else is this too? The mood across the Wehrmacht is one of tense excitement. All of our work these last few months is really going to finally bear fruit. Our back lines are firmly secure, supply routes are well established and ready, and an army filled with capacity with eager men willing to give their lives for the glory of the Reich. We're on the eve of our greatest fight yet, Commander. Prepare yourself, seek how. Our army organization increased by 12%, and our nutrition rate will decrease by 20%. Fan flippin' tastic. Grenadiers, I love them. GRWI. Paul Blau still. Restricts our attrition and infantry to attack. Loop off doing pretty good though. German economy. Hostile Iranian population, huh? Beautiful thus far. 142,000 losses, not bad. Supply issues all across the entire group here, which is very unfortunate. It just takes so long to build supply bases and whatnot. It's terrible. Yeah, it's looking better. That's looking better too. Oh. Can never build fast enough. Cross the waist from within, and then we'll clip the rising sun. Eventually, we'll read Caesar's sphere. More than a few members of Japan's sphere have been hesitant in assisting the Japanese. They stand by, but this will likely not be for long. Even now, the Japanese are exerting all influence they can to, to marshal their subjects and get the soldiers on the front lines. While we should have an excellent opportunity in our hands, if we act fast, maybe we may be able to convince a number of these members to abandon Japan completely and join our cause in exchange for freedom, money, weapons, or whatever else they want. And whatever they can get while they're still alive. Nice. Daily gain, 10,500. Ah, uh, the army takes the most of that. The Republic of India. Oh my god, there's so many Indians. Go all the way here to just go around them. Trivandrum. I dare a bad. Nice. Tibet joins Sphere. Looks like the recent actions have spooked the Tibetans into a bit too much. Today, the Ah Bear and the Foreign Ministry got hold of a soon to be made official text about Lhasa or Lhasa becoming a member of the Core Prosperity Sphere. Seems like the highest mountains in the world now become just another front line or plans against the Japanese. Himalayas can't stop German steel. Lhasa, huh? Bhutan. Should have these trade supply bases done soon, right? Yeah, that's just not bad. It's not halfway bad. No. I filled the lines, that's good. A lot of lag there, though. Oh, God. Why is there so much lag? We're just raising a few divisions, aren't we? Well, are we not? I forget what the heck is going on. Yeah. Um, regardless, I guess I might just end the episode here, then. Um, we'll finish off India. It should be fine. And then we'll go to war with Japan and beat the crap out of them in the next episode, which will probably be the final episode for us in this campaign. If you enjoyed this video, though, of us taking out America and, of course, the Middle East and parts of Asia, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll probably finish out this campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.